Let's demonstrate a non-counterbalanced tandem rappel and talk about its advantages, but also why we don't do this all the time. Hello again, everyone. I'm Jason. I've done a couple of videos on counterbalanced rappels. That's a rappel with two climbers, each on one strand, with the rope free to run through the rappel point. The first video goes into the risks and talks about mitigation tactics. The second video gets into why I and my family don't typically find counterbalanced rappels to be worth those risks, even with added safety measures in place. On the back of one of those videos, someone brought up the notion of a tandem rappel not counterbalanced, as a viable alternative. It is. Let's walk through executing one and talk about the pros and what I would argue are nuanced but significant cons. For our tandem rappel, we are going to have two people descending at the same time on one device. Let's start with our typical rappel setup with the device extended away from us with both ropes running through our device and a third hand friction hitch backup. We're going to have more weight on the rappel, so we may want to add another wrap to the friction hitch. Also, in this particular case, I like to use a basket hitch, running my sling through both hard points and tying an overhand about halfway up the material, because it creates a redundant connection point at both my harness and where the device is attached. While a tandem rappel is often used in rescue scenarios, let's assume the second climber is healthy enough to use their legs. In that case, we want to use a sling that is long enough to put the second climber behind and off of the first climber's hip. There are scenarios where injury may dictate that we put the second climber in front of the first climber, where the first climber can better support them, but at the loss of efficiency of movement. Ideally then, we're using a sling that is at least as long as what the first climber used to set up their rappel extension, because the length from the device to the overhand will be the length that the second climber is behind the first. Again, we will make a basket hitch so that the connection point is redundant. After testing the system, guaranteeing that it can hold the weight of two climbers on the friction hitch, the second climber, and then the first, can come out of the anchor and start the rappel. The second will often find it somewhat stabilizing to hold onto their sling attachment. So, compared to a counterbalanced rappel, we've gained a major advantage in that one person unweighting their strand doesn't cause the other person to shift. Or, against the more catastrophic failure of one person either rappelling off the end of the rope or having their rope cut by rock fall or some such, which would cause the second person to similarly fall. Yes, there are safety measures to protect from these things, but those are both not foolproof and take time to set up. With the tandem rappel, it's not as involved. We're using the extensions we would be using anyway. Of course, we have also gained the advantage of having both climbers go down for the time that it takes to do one rappel rather than two separate rappels. Which begs the question, why isn't this standard practice if it's safe and lets both climbers descend at once? Well, let's talk about some cons. First, while we gain time from not having to do two rappels, we lose time in the rate of progress of that rappel. It's complicated to get four legs all working at the same rate, especially when the second climber doesn't have the benefit of feeling the rappel strands go through their friction hitch or device. The more complicated the terrain, the harder this gets, so we have higher probability of slipping or banging into features. Plus, we add in the probability of stepping on each other and banging into each other, too, not just the rock. But let's talk about avalanches. Huh? Why avalanches? One of the risk mitigation strategies for moving under or across avalanche terrain is to spread out, leaving large gaps between climbers. The morbid reason is that should an avalanche happen, the avalanche will not catch all the climbers, leaving some free to attempt to rescue. When we tandem repel, we have increased the likelihood that if something unfortunate happens to one of us, a rock hitting us, or worse, cutting the rope, it happens to both of us. So, Two separate rappels might actually be faster in complex terrain where moving together at the same rate could be difficult, and maybe more importantly, the separation of climbers is a risk mitigation strategy unto itself. Got a tandem rappel story? Tell it to us in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can watch that video about why we typically don't use counterbalanced rappels or maybe check out our entire rock climbing safety series. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.